But anyhow, as I was saying, they decided to pursue this adventure, and uh, whenever they first uh, showed off the Intellivision, they showed it off in California, and this was one of the games they showed it off with uh, the Las Vegas Poker and Blackjack. They also tried Math Fun, which sounds like a riveting game if you ask me, Armor Battle and Backgammon. So, uh... So when the Intellivision was released, uh, it originally had 12 games that they uh, eventually came out with, and the price was 299 U.S. dollars. Yeah. Uh, also, at the time, whenever they were first started to release this, it was the first time that we really saw a very, very... Uh, we saw a, a commercials attacking the Atari at the time, the, the main competitor. And uh, I guess these were very, very... Aggressive, aggressive ads. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Aggressive ads. Uh, starring, I believe it was Plimpton, if I'm correct. Let me wait a second. Yeah, we can keep going. Okay. Starring George Plimpton as their uh, spokesman. And... Whenever originally, whenever uh, the Intellivision was released, uh, they were Mattel was toting a keyboard peripheral that would later be released many years later. But at the time, they were toting this keyboard peripheral a lot, and the problem came in. Uh, a, a television Mattel kind of wanted to do with the Intellivision. They wanted to have a game system plus a home computer. So eventually, they would release this keyboard, quote unquote, that would turn the Intellivision into a home computer. You know, uh, more bang for your buck. But we'll see later on how this became a big issue as the keyboard was delayed and delayed and delayed and eventually forced to be released by the government, which is a crazy, crazy idea, but it happened. Yeah, the government was basically... Um, they intervened. ...telling them over amount of time that they need to... Um, not hit the wrong they fucking need to get button. The what am I... That they would need to get this system out, or this keyboard out. They would need to get this keyboard out. Uh, one of the cool things about the Intellivision, as we saw with a lot of early consoles, is there was different versions tailored to different uh, places that they were sold. The series, the version of the Intellivision they got was the Super Video Arcade. Which was basically a lot like the... Um, uh, they had a deal with the Atari... Um, to release the Sears Video Arcade, so this is basically their version of the Radio Shack had the Tandy Man One, and uh, there were there were a couple other versions of it that were released. So we're taking a look at Blackjack, as we said that this game was released with the Intellivision. It was a pack-in game, so if you enjoyed a little bit of cards, you would enjoy this electronic card game with your shady dealer, as you can see his shifty eyes going back and forth. <laughs> Yeah, and in the early commercials, they actually called him the shifty-eyed dealer. There you go, then. I, he looks shifty-eyed. They got that right on. And you can see right away how the Intellivision, even though it's in black and white right now, uh, how it was pushing a lot more sprite capability. Hey, Whoa. look at that. <laughs> the gods that? praise us. The gods <laughs> shine upon us with gracious gifts of color. I'm betting it all so, now. We can see, as I was saying, though, how it had a uh, much more sprite prowess, I will say. And, yeah, it uh, looked a lot better. It than, does. It looks um, a lot better. It's pushing, I believe, it was a 16-bit processor at the time. Well, this was also the first system where you could have people that actually kind of look like real people. You know, what? well, I've had enough of this game. I think we're going to move on to our next one. All right, everybody, welcome back. Today we are taking a look at Space Hawk for the Mattel Intellivision. And here you are as a spaceman just kind of floating through space doing your own thing and you've got to shoot these flying creature looking thingies that are shooting gas bubbles at you. And this is a good game to show off the uh, the controller. This is, you know, a pretty basic game 
and uh, it's pretty much like Space War. You just kind of float around through space. You've got a hyperspace button. You can jump to another area if you're in trouble, and you can fire. But uh, it uses the 16 uh, degrees of uh, motion on the Intellivision controller pretty well. As you can see, I can spin the whole way around, and uh, the the control mechanism is basically a disc that that pivots on one of uh, 16 different places. It's cool how it picks it up so easily. Uh, it's the the movement is actually really fluid. Yeah, it had a lot uh, easier ra range of <clears throat> it had a lot easier range of motion than the. Uh, the Atari's four directions on the joystick, which uh, godforsaken 5200 controller. <laughs> yeah, well, nothing before this really uh, came out that worked that well. I don't know. There were, it, at least not uh, for a home system. Yeah, it, everything else was like custom built in the arcade, where everything was like loaded onto a spring and it's it like full whoa. So you can see, you can you can just keep going and going, <clears throat> and uh, floating through try, space, infinite. Try and spin around. You can use your thruster to stop yourself. Now, something else you'll notice here is um, a lot of these games have decent backgrounds, where it, it seems like there's two or three layers of things going on. Where a lot of the Atari games basically look like one layer of blocks. Yeah, and uh, as we mentioned, the head-to-head -head comparisons, uh, that was one thing that Mattel really touted was uh, how much better the graphics were, and in capabilities, uh, things like the Blackjack game where it would keep track of how much money was being bad, how much money you had, and in some of the sports games we'll look at, we'll see timers and uh, things keeping track of of scores and times that we didn't see really with too many uh, Atari games. That was one of the big things that uh, Mattel focused on was they kind of exploited Atari's weaknesses on that part and advertised um, said weaknesses. Yeah, it was very direct advertising that instead of uh, you know just saying how good your product is, it was head to head with George Plipton standing TV to TV showing you which system was the best. And I'm sure you'll see some of these ads as we do this series. Yeah, the head-to-head -head comparisons he did were basically what stole the show. And for anyone who doesn't know who George Plimpton is, he's basically your classic playboy. He, uh, you know, he... Like Hugh Hefner? Kind of. Uh, not so much playboy, but just, uh... A well-to-do man. He's done a lot of things. He's been a pro professional golfer. He's been an actor. He's been a writer. Jack he's of been, all trades type. He's been an Intellivision spokesman. Yeah, he does all sorts of different celebrity type things. They're, I know it's he all it's all celebrity stuff. But you know, I knew he wrote a book about being on like a football team for uh, during the preseason or something. Yeah, he played football. I uh, and. Uh, he knew the Kennedys, and he he was very close with uh, very well Robert Kennedy. Guy. Well, he was very close with Robert Kennedy before he got killed. They were good friends, and uh, that has nothing to do with the Intellivision but, <laughs> at all. But but, but but Plipton is an interesting character because it really ties real uh, you know to the core of what the Intellivision was. And he'd come in with his little sweater on and just say, "The Intellivision does this. The Atari doesn't." And that kind of uh, direct marketing worked pretty well for them. Hills presents in television, intelligent television by Mattel, more sophisticated than any video game that has come before, providing hours of entertainment for the entire family. In television, with one of the clearest game displays available today, find this system plus a complete line of sports and video game cassettes at Hills, where our game is low prices every day. You can't hear us.